Now this is this is going to be quite an adventure. This is this is Glenn Hansen's Ducati, which already before he even brought it over here, he took the fairings off, made kind of a street fighter out of it. A street fighter with saddlebags. I'm not sure what that's all about. <laughs> Glenn is here with me to kind of describe the way this day went. It's a sleep fighter. A sleep fighter, yeah. Now here he is showing you what kind of underwear he he uses. <laughs> The, the Hanson BBD show here. It's my collection. Anyway, we made a deal. The deal was, and I told Glenn that uh, because I had never taken a Ducati engine out before, I've taken other engines for other bikes, but a Ducati engine's, of course, a little bit different. And so what we decided to do is, is but maybe bite off more than we could chew. We invited Luciano to join us, who is a Ducati mechanic, and he kind of supervised an as I always do when I take things apart, I try to take pictures. The reason here, if I can't figure out where our hose went or a wire or a zip tie or something, we can at least look back at the pictures. So actually, before we even started this, I tried to look at the way some, and, and we didn't know at this point how much of this stuff was going to have to come apart. Of course, the first thing you want to do, and anybody that's ever done this, you know this is true, you want to get the battery out of the bike because what really happens and if, if you have a live wire and you touch it to ground and you have your head under the oil pan at the time, you can, you can be, at least the worst scenario is you can scare yourself. Anyway, we got some parts and Glenn had already taken them off the bike. These are parts that we're going to paint black. He's got a mirror that has to be fixed. We're going to JB weld that. There's a piece that comes off. And, and Glenn and I are making a multi-day project out of, well, we... I told him that I thought if we started at 9 o'clock, I'd have the engine out by 1. Now, well, we don't know if that's true yet. We're going to see as we go through the pictures. But we were shooting for having the engine out at 1 o'clock. Now, what you don't know about getting the bike here in that state is taking those parts off. Wow. I, I can see why having a naked bike is so desirable because... <laughs> I don't know. There were hidden bolts and fasteners on that upper fairing that drove me bananas. But yeah, uh, yeah it came off and uh, not, actually it looks pretty cool, like not a street too bad. fighter. Yeah, yeah, you get rid of this oil, this uh, overflow tank. Put that somewhere. Yeah, that would be good. Actually, my FCR when I was restoring the FCR, I I rode it like this with the oil stuff just hanging out, and it it was a lot faster. Too. Felt a lot quicker <laughs> on the way here. It wheelied a lot quicker. I know that. <laughs> So anyway, truly, we had to get rid of the battery first to make this uh, desirable. And again, I love using my uh, Harbor Freight. Thanks to Ray and Malcolm and everybody that encouraged me to get one of these. Worth every penny Absolutely. when you're going to do this job. Strap up, snap up the bike with the straps. Pull as much we got. We know we have to do certain things, you know. And Luciano is didn't get there till about ten, so. Uh, we try to get all the easy stuff off. Get the battery off. We know we got to take the fuel tank and the fuel lines off. And uh, a Ducati tank is like a, uh, a Ford hood. You put the little rod under there. It's kind of nice. Actually, it's really nice because the FZR doesn't have that rod and you got to have nine hands to get the fuel line back on. So there's a lot of stuff about this now because... If you do this work every day, if you had worked on these bikes every day, you wouldn't need to take the pictures. But I like to take the pictures. And another thing I've learned the hard way, when you take a gas tank off a bike, put it somewhere where you're not working because you kick it, you trip on it, or it leaks, or something, and just make it easy on yourself. Now, Glenn had the great idea, and it's something I agree with, is every time we took a hose off, he marked where the hose went, he marked the tank. Probably unnecessary if you're a professional mechanic, if you're, uh, you know, Joe the NASCAR mechanic or something. I love watching these guys do dragster engines. They have a toolbox to remove the head, a toolbox to remove the fuel pump. <laughs> we don't, we don't have that here. Right? Oh, we're spot. tagging. <laughs> we're faking it. This is McDonald's of. Uh... <laughs> but anyway, to to make a long story short, yeah, I thought it would be a real advantage having to come along on a triple tree here. So that when we did loosen the engine and it was sitting on a jack, we could jack the bike up a little. Yeah. Well, it didn't prove to be really necessary, but it gave us a secure feeling because as we go through this job, some of these bolts didn't really want to come out the way we planned. And we, to our chagrin, finding the last bolt on the, on the air intake box only took about a half an hour. Yeah. There's a bolt up underneath the radiator that 
I have no idea. They must have been having pepperoni pizza when they decided to put that bolt there. Now, another thing that I do in the shop when I'm doing an unfamiliar project, I put the parts starting at the back. I moved out the track bike. And as we took the parts off, line them up in sequence so that we basically, when we go to put this back together, we can go backwards. Now, as you can imagine, too, that we had worked on this bike before, did the chain. What else did we do? I don't remember. We changed the sprockets. The sprockets. The so we had a little experience, but of course we had, we had not taken the engine out yet. And there's a lot of little things. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but Luciano suggested something that worked out great. We left the whole fuel injection system intact in one piece, still in the bike, and took it apart at the manifolds so that the engine drops away, but the fuel injection stayed in place. And that means you don't have to disrupt the fittings, you don't have to disrupt. We took the cable off, but I didn't have to. We really could have left that cable on. But again, there's a bolt up under the front here that uh, I was laughing because it only took us about 20 minutes to find it. But that's the fun of doing this stuff. And if you don't enjoy that, we also found in the course of taking us apart a bunch of hoses that just had a bolt in the end of them. So it looked like somebody took this bike and took either the pollution stuff off. Mm -hmm. This was the hose that balanced the two carburetors out, and it just had a T-fitting and a rubber hose on You know, unless Glenn wants to figure out where it goes, the bike was running great without it. I wouldn't yep. even put it back. So here we are. We got everything taped up and zip-tied, and we're getting into some of the more exciting things here of, of this project. The hose, I don't remember what we have, we have marked where that one went. The air box has a hose. Go Everything is, there's enough hoses on this bike. You can make a fire engine out of it. And then finally, when Luciano got there, of course, the most fun you can have is you have Luciano, yeah, <laughs> Wendy, and Glenn. A toolbox and a bike that needs some work. And the pepperoni just flies off the pizza. <laughs> so he starts off the day. He, I don't know where he got this shirt. He had a shirt made. Yeah, but there's no phone number. Yeah, no, no address. <laughs> we, we want to know where you live. I bought this Harley from you, and the front wheel came off. <laughs> Felici's a no here. Uh, Oakland, New Jersey. Yeah, hey, that's not enough. We need to know your personal address. <laughs> where do you buy your pizzas from? No, that's true, but... And we got the airbox. <clears throat> Getting the airbox off, not really challenging. Finding the front bolt, challenging. Now we're starting to build up from the back of the garage wall to the front Ducati parts. The luckily, Motorcycle Mall, which is not far from my house, is stocking parts. Because as the day started evolving, I realized we're going to need a lot of parts before this is done. We, we should have moved closer to Motorcycle Mall. Anyway, we got the ignition system off. We found out that this probably doesn't affect anything, but there's all cracks in the, in the cam cover. Not sure if you need to just JB weld that or put some silicone on it, but... Another thing, because we're taking the engine out to be welded, we wanted to get all the fluids out of it, get the oil out. The mufflers, how much do you think the mufflers on God, this bike weigh? got to be 25 pounds. I ought to get out the bathroom scale and see yeah, what they, they weigh. They were heavy. I, I thought they were full of cement. Or pepperoni or, or something. something. The, these are the heaviest mufflers. The muffler on my, on my truck isn't this heavy. Anyway, we got out the oil, and, and this is like the seventh oil change this bike has had. It's still coming still out filthy. dirty, so I don't know what's going on. We Actually, getting the exhaust system off, you had to take the center stand off to get the exhaust system off. Some of the nuts were rusted pretty well. But this is what makes a day at Wendy's complete. Karen brings out the coffee and the, what we know as Windy Cream because it's flavored cream. And this makes you work a lot better. The day speeds right up. As soon as you have that coffee, Karen knows they'll be all hell to pay now. These parts are going to come flying off the bike. <laughs> Look at his face. One cup of coffee. <laughs> Much happier. Much happier. Yeah, and you can't even see Luciano. He's probably laughing. Yeah. <laughs> now, Luciano and I, we don't always agree on everything. But whenever we have an argument and we don't agree, there's two possibilities. One is Wendy's wrong and Luciano's right. The other one is it's a tie. So what we did, we got a bunch of these little containers, and I put, I try to pass this tip on. This is uh, for the exhaust system, so that all your exhaust system, system parts are here. And what will make this clean is we're going to, of course, wire wheel all these down one cup at a time, 
while we're waiting for uh, the welder to do his thing. I have probably a hundred of these all throughout the shop. And what do you do? You save them? For yeah, you Chinese just save food or whatever well, you get. Or... I don't know marijuana sales or whatever right, goes whatever on here. Get, right. Baby diapers. We, the things that baby wipes come in are handy too. All right. So we're looking at this in a lot of ways. We had to take off. This is the brake system had to come off to get the last bolt out. And I'm sure somebody at Ducati is making a ton of money to figure out how to make it difficult to take the bike apart. But they we, earn their money. They they can't outsmart us. There's no way. It's not even going to be a fair contest. So as we took the bike apart, we noticed not only was the engine cracked. One now, this is the rear engine bolt. Yeah, it is. Here's yeah, this was. Um, so when I was at the house the day before I got here, I made sure that I lubed everything up with WD, and I did see this one before you guys did. But I wanted to leave it in there so I could surprise you with it. Yeah, we really appreciate it. So here's the nut came the off surprise. with the threads of the bolts okay. still you in You can it. see the WD I had from the day before still in there, but not needed for that side because no. it's, uh, the in stud is In essence, broken. you had no rear mount. You were riding around with no rear that I could see. Anyway. No, uh, it's just the front mounts and, and all that weight from the swing arm just wow. kept dragging on the back of the rear mount. Wow. Now, a Ducati, for anybody who doesn't know, the swing arm mounts to the engine. Uh, everything mounts to the engine. The horn mounts to the engine. No, the kickstand mounts the, to the, the engine. The kickstand. And I, I thought he was kidding, but as we took this bike apart, I said, wow. Yeah, no, they put a lot of stress on that motor. Yeah, yeah. And that's why that motor is so heavy. When you go to pick it up, I mean, it definitely is... It's it's heavier than an average motor. I don't like seventy five. Oh, we gotta weigh it. I'm gonna take the bathroom scale down. Yeah. Anyway, this is what the nut. These are grade eight bolts. I'm sure he's gonna get an original Ducati bolt, and and I would guess this would be like once every thousand miles. Now, get a, a torque pretty, wrench. It's a, yeah, it's a pretty big stud. It's ten millimeter stud. It's pretty big, and uh, for that to get snapped off, you could just imagine the amount of torque that's being applied to the motor. And when we get to the brake, oh yeah, when we get to the brake in the actual motor, you'll see the reasons why that snapped. I would make sure you get a Ducati ten millimeter because see, it's got a flange on the back. Yeah. I'd rather have that than a washer. Right. And anyway, we're going to use genuine Ducati parts. Here's the genuine Ducati kickstand. This is funny too. This is this is a little bit awkward. You got to take it off to get the exhaust system off. And that slides through the motor also. Yeah, but and I guess now you know to be on to be fair. I mean, all bikes are quirky. When you go to take the carburetors off a of GS, you could go crazy. When you every bike has something that the engineers, I'm sure, had a, a big laugh at the lunch table. <laughs> Wait till they try to take this off. And actually, on one of Luciano's ninjas, the starter clutch went. And you had to split the engine cases to get it out. Holy cow! So, I mean, in all fairness, uh, yeah, every bike did come out pretty easy. Yeah, for, well, we don't want to spoil the surprise. Do you think we're going to get? Of course, Luciano here. Well, that's not Luciano. That's the uh, that's <laughs> that's the, <laughs> the that's the Felici of Bison right there. Yeah. No, we Luciano makes any day in the shop worthwhile. And I, I think he has wine before he comes over, but I'm not sure. <laughs> But we were starting to stack parts, and we were starting to get things cooking and cleaning out the oil drum, and we didn't we didn't bother doing any parts cleaning, which sped the whole thing up quite a bit. But it, a battery box really needs a, a thorough cleaning. We're going to set up a cleaning tank anyway on this, and I'll show that. That's a nice little trick anybody can do. Want to pass on some of the tips? One of the things was neat about this: we took all the coolant out of the engine, and it stayed in the reservoir tank. The, probably the thermostat holds it in. I'm not sure. Uh, we wanted to get all the all the fluids out of the engine. And this is funny. Glenn was taking it out of the, the and, and Luciano says, "Come on, come on, come on! Take off the lower hose and boom, out come four gallons <laughs> like the Titanic." Is <laughs> now I I try to mark each one of the little containers. And of course, if you're familiar, if you're a professional mechanic, well, you know we know you know where all the bolts go, but. But for us, I'd rather have each little thing, battery box, fender, you know, gas tank, whatever. Uh, and he has, when he took this out, it was this was pretty funny. You had to see, I should have had the video camera. Yeah, for that. that's when it started. A gallon going. came out in, in a nanosecond. So anyway, and he decided it was so much fun, we'd just get it all over his hands and the floor and the, the, the stand. <laughs> we would we'd take a bath in this. And you had to, actually, you had to take the lower hose off of this. To, to get the last little bit out of the tank. I, I was amazed at that. But So I know for people that, that have never done this, it, it can be intimidating looking at a thousand hoses and a but <laughs> yeah, that's, but that's this, us intimidated. This right? is this is Karen's version of a funny picture. <laughs> she says, You guys need more windy cream and coffee. 
Anyway, we back the sprocket we had just put on the week before. It was coming right back off. Coming right back off. So, but without the broken tooth. And the lower the the ground wire to the starter was was you know of course one of the things you got to get off. You've got to get everything that attaches to the engine before you can loosen the engine bolts. And I try to get it from every angle. Again, it, a lot of times these pictures look stupid, but if you're looking for, hey, 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 where does that the big bolt go? Which, and it, here's another thing: the fuel injection. I didn't want to touch this because, you know, I have an R1, and the R1 manual, there's the whole manual to disassemble a whole mo engine, the motorcycle, the engine, rebuild the crank, is about a hundred pages, and then there's four hundred pages of how to diagnose fuel injection problems. Hey, Wendy. Hey, just hang on. We're doing a video. Yeah, go ahead. We got more guests here. Everybody wants to be at Wendy's today. It's a big day. Anyway, more pictures of this. You can come up and make comments if you want. Don't trip on the baby's toys. So anyway, here we go with uh, more pictures of the fuel injection. Yeah, this was important to get that that the whole. Yeah, that fuel injection right is the part there. of this whole thing that scares me. Come on down. Chuck is at the back door. Yeah, he's already here. Okay. I know. Wait, uh, our, our videos are done impromptly, you know, you don't have, just come on in, Chuck. <laughs> no problem. Chuck is here, and I know he's got something interesting to share with us. Maybe a winning lottery ticket, maybe not. Anyway, the, the reason for this picture is we wanted to leave even this hose intact, which goes to the fuel tank. I didn't want to wind up with a thousand hoses and breaking these, these are factory clamps. And we'll, obviously, while this is in place, we can do some cleanup on that. The throttle cable, which uh, this really didn't have to be disconnected, and again, this is my uh, error in judgment. I thought we were going to pull a fuel injection out at this point. And the choke cable, well, we, we know we don't have to do that either. And and so the way this worked, and it was Luciano's suggestion, and it worked out really well, was to just leave the, the, the fuel injectors in place, break it at the rubber mounts, and then just when we drop the motor, leave the fuel injection in place. And that probably saved us, saved our bacon in a lot of ways. Now, see, because he does this stuff all the time. He's got three Ducatis, and he's he's always got some clutch or a, an engine or a starter motor or something on his bench, and he's got a spare engine to play with. We don't have a spare engine to go look at and see where the bolts go. This this all this stuff had to come off, but I'm not I'm not sure this is any more unique or less unique than uh, than the, the, you know. The FZR, for instance. Now, what is unique about a Ducati, the swing arm mounts to the back of the crankcase. There's a C-clip on this tube, which then goes through a needle bearing, which is pressed into the case. So, the only problem with this now is that if you don't have two hoists, once you break the swing arm, the back of the bike falls down. There's, there's nothing holding the back of the bike up. So now, this is, this is where you get where Luciano decided to take one bolt out, Glenn decided we didn't have to take that bolt out, he, he, and it, I, of course, it's his bike. He got the final vote. But then to, he saw the error in his ways, and we decided to go with Luciano's way of doing it. And we finally did get the swing arm bolt out. But now the problem is the swing arm, you have to hold with a cable, or in this case a strap. we got the come along holding the front of the bike. This holding the back of the bike. There's nothing in between. This, this back of the bike, the swing arm is just hanging on by the shock by one bolt. So, probably at uh, Moto Ducati down there, they have a special tool for doing that, but we don't have the tool. Now, I taught it to take some pictures of this, because we may take this apart and clean it all up while we got the bike apart. Uh, some of the connectors, and there's a bunch of these, and every one of these connectors is, looks like something unique for that connector. So, to their credit, I think it's great. You really couldn't put these on backwards. You know what I'm saying? Can't cross them up. Where some of the Japanese stuff... But in the Japanese bikes, the wires are color coded. In a in an Italian bike, the wires aren't color coded. I mean, they got the black on, but the ends are different. So that's a, I guess, their safety thing. Now another thing was, I don't remember this one had to come off. This is probably the. Uh, yeah, I think we just undid the 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 top another of the one. Sending switch and. Yeah, I wanted to have a a picture of each one, and then we decided, of course, we have to loosen the axle, push it forward to get the chain off. You can't take the engine off without taking a chain off. There's a picture of Glenn's belly. The underbelly of the bike, the underbelly of the beast. 
And I wanted pictures from every angle because you never know. Now, I had done a thing years ago of taking an engine out of a boat that I owned, and, and boy, there were so many hoses and clamps, and at the end, I, I wish I had taken pictures. Yeah, I mean, when you cut away all those zip ties, it's nice to see how oh, those, yeah. Where they how's go? Those, they're getting placed back in so you're not pinching anything yep. with the fairing or anything like you that. You bet. So here we are. We got the engine positioned We're under a ready. spot. We're we ready. try to figure out the center of gravity of the engine, which is very far forward because of the front cylinder. And jacking it up, of course, this is where it's handy to have the third guy. Because one guy's got a jack while two guys hold the engine. Unless and you, you got... can see the missing bolt right there in the yeah. cab cover, too. Yeah, and Glenn noticed this right away. Mm -hmm. I had to make a bolt for this. You have to make a... Uh, later on in the day, we made a bolt. But when you buy a used bike, obviously, just the fact that you're pulling it apart, you may as well do everything. And it's some of the other connectors and some of the other hoses and... We got pictures of Glenn's tattoos here, and <laughs> what else do we have? And right at the, the way we were doing this is when the baby came over, didn't it? We were right in the middle of doing everything, and my... Yeah, that was a nice break. My daughter brought the baby over, so we took a nice break, somewhere around here, I think. And, of course, Luciano says, take a picture of my Ducati watch. These are $1,000 on the internet. <laughs> well, so, it's official time. <laughs> official. Right? Yeah. This is the time in right. Italy or at the pepperoni and, factory and, well, well, or something. Well, at 1 o'clock, uh, I put yeah. meatball parmesan pops out. Now, there's a story about the watch. Luciano's jealous because I have a real Ferrari watch, a real one. And so he bought this. I don't know if it's a real one or not. We're gonna, I'm going to try to steal it one day when he's not looking. <laughs> we'll have it evaluated. Anyway, now getting the engine, the last of the engine bolts, this is where it starts to get to be fun. Right. C-clips off. C-clips off, came right off. No problem. You press that out with a socket wrench. Here, Now, here's the biggie. I always tell everybody that works in the shop, no matter what job you do, there's one bolt that won't come out. This bolt. was literally the last <laughs> bolt. Literally the last bolt to get the engine out. And this, on the bottom of the swing arm, the chain had been rubbing on this. Obviously, the guy never adjusted the chain that had the bike. Whacked it wore it. through the head of the bolt, and we, uh, what do you think we spent? 45 minutes yeah. getting it? We yeah. vice gripped it. Yeah. I eventually took the Dremel tool out and put flat sides on the bolt. There it is. See what I did? I ground away the yeah. bolt, and we <laughs> eventually got it out. But this was this was Polish engineering at its best. That that's, That'll be on the list of parts needed. Yes, parts. You, you better buy a Ducati bolt. You don't yeah. go running to Lowe's and buy one of those grade 8 <laughs> generic bolts for 20 cents. <laughs> When you can pay fifteen dollars, a plastic the, bolt I, is no good. So, no, no, no good. A license plate bolt will right. do it out there. All right, so Glenn is now looking with chagrin at. Okay, if we're so smart, look at this. We made the deadline. We set the deadline at one o'clock because I knew I knew by looking at this it would be out. I really lied to Glenn. I told I knew it would be out in four hours. No, I was thinking a little longer. And there's the there engine. There it is. You had no faith in me. I I, I had a ye of little faith. <laughs> So there's the engine on the floor at 10 minutes to 1, and uh, there's the broken, one yeah, broken now, piece Now we case. could actually touch the pieces, and boy, yeah. oh boy, were they broken. Boy, and bolts were missing. So anyway, this part of the job, this now you know the hardest part is over. So once that engine is out and the bike is hanging from two come-alongs, now, now it's time to celebrate. I mean, we really did celebrate. That's your celebration phase. That's my celebration phase. In fact, because it was the day after Cinco de Mayo, I just happened to have a Mexican, extra Mexican hat, which will come into the movie later. So we loaded it into an official Ducati. Uh, now this is an official Ducati trail. engine stand. Right. It's my grandson's wig. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the thing is, now to be honest, you know Glenn is a strong guy. There's no doubt about it, and and he's young. I'm old. And and it, this thing is a heavy engine. I don't care what. This is like moving a tombstone or something. It's not just heavy. There's no way to grab There's it. There's no handle. Now, we're going to later on in the next part of the video show the proper way to make a stand for a Ducati engine. But right now, we're struggling. This I remember thinking, oh, my God, we got to get it up off the tape. And I do have the proper tools of yes. a crescent wrench and a screwdriver. Yes. These are some of the, now, Glenn, I showed him, these are the parts that need to be prepped. And any, because we still have the Cinco, Cinco de, de Mayo. Mayo. <laughs> we had gone to Cinco de Mayo the day before, and, uh, you know, they were doing the, the usual dance and everything. We took a hat home with us. Anyway, now we got out a gallon of diesel fuel and boy. a thousand paint brushes. We and used it, boy. You can see this is a pan I made out of a tub, one of these tubs you buy for, for five bucks. And, uh, you know, and that picture something. really doesn't do justice to how dirty the motor actually was when oh, we got it out. I mean, it's it disgusting. was filthy. 
Now, I showed Glenn another trick from the days when doing other kind of stuff. We took out some balsa wood and made engine plugs. You press this up against the intake, and then you can make a nice balsa wood plug. When you tighten the clamp, it keeps all the dirt, because we're going to have to leave this at the welders, of course. Everywhere there's an opening in the engine, we made a balsa wood plug, which he will not forget to take out before we put the engine back together. And I, got, I tried to get a picture. This is the line, the fuel line to nowhere. I don't know what that was all about. And now there's another exciting little thing. We wanted to get the neutral switch out. Now, of course, Ducati engineered the neutral switch, so nobody on the planet can ever get it out. This was another adventure. Getting a battery. I don't know what they used. They must use red Loctite was or red something. Loctite I, was humble. I bent yeah, the was... wrench getting that out. Yeah, that was tough. And then my grandson came by. He was, he was, they was getting dropped off, not picked up here. And, of course, you know, he took the Mexican hat from me, and that was the end of my Mexican hat. Where's my Mexican hat, Grandpa? I want my Mexican hat. <laughs> but Back to work. Back to work. You know, we don't take long breaks here at... Uh, Jacoby and Myers or whatever we are here. Look at this. Now, all this stuff we had cleaned up the week before somewhat, but now you can get in with the diesel fuel and an array of brushes. Now, this this is interesting to me. Okay. Because I've I've always cleaned motors with all types of sim, from everything from simple green to, yeah, even, you know, the, the, the gas at, at, at some times, but I've never utilized compressed air to clean a motor and when you told me this is your your, your kind of your trick to doing yeah. this well it's luciano's trick I, I needed to see how this was done so this is you showing me in the very beginning yeah let me show you how i do this and really there's no secret to it other than you just slather on all, all yeah, that just keep doing fluid, it yeah and then just blast it out but it man it gets into all the the, the crannies and all those it doesn't little, hurt chains it doesn't hurt seals it does, it's everything that's good it but you gotta great. when you